Our second story is Trog and Prom Almost Get It Right, and it's by Philip Douch. Uh, this is a story that goes back to a Stroud Short Stories event in February 2013. Philip Douch performs at Story Fridays in Bath, as well as in Stroud, where he regularly hosts evenings called Short Stories for Grown Ups. He has also persuaded festival audiences to recreate Wimbledon Fortnight and a Sunday South Africa England Test match in his uniquely ridiculous one man show. Philip won last year's Gloucestershire Writers Network short story competition and has three plays produced professionally. <coughs> Please welcome to the stage to read Trog and Cron, Almost Get It Right, Philip Douch. Frog and Crom almost get it right. So tell me, Trog, said Crom casually, what was the name of the earth place? Trog rummaged in the back pocket of his intergalactic trues. He found the inevitable stray cyber coin, some space fluff, and an old paper clip, which he had no memory thought of ever having put there and no idea what on planet it could be. But the scrap of note parchment on which he had e-typed the name was missing. Had Trog and Cron still been in the module, message checking would have been straightforward, or a swift teleport could have done the trick. But Trog and Cron were not in the module. They were on a virgin cross-country train mobile blending with the Earth residents. Or at least, blending with the Earth residents as much as a three-cornered hat covering your antennae can permit. Fortunately for Trog and Crom, a certain incompetence in the blending department seemed no great hindrance on the trainmobile. Whilst gregariousness would not have been at the top of a list of cultural indicators back home on Dras Pluk. They had not previously encountered a species of sentience whose members so steadfastly avoided ocular engagement behaviours when in such close proximity. Trog and Kron could not help but marvel at the skill with which intermember eye look was routinely avoided, and any stray glance instantaneously redirected, presumably for fear that fleeting meaningful relationals might otherwise inadvertently be established. A patrolling Earth resident appeared. Random travel beings proffered him their parchment pieces, only to find them brutally punctured and returned. Some travel beings, mostly wrinkled ones, long hairy ones with ruckerback packages, or those encumbered with small noisome ones, tried giving him a tiny picture semblance, but all to no avail. Their parchment pieces too were punctured and returned. For reasons that failed to accord with Trog's lingua research, the travel beings nonetheless enacted the curly edge of mouth move and uttered thank you wordings. Trog and Cron had gathered their own parchment pieces at the trainmobile start place, simply by imitating the earth residents in front of them. Neither was quite sure what a Super Saver Return to Plymouth Please actually was, but for some reason Plymouth had stuck in Trog's mind space from his somewhat patchy researchification. Anyway, obtaining the parchment pieces had certainly seemed appropriately blendish, as did not flinching when those pieces were now duly mutilated and returned. Trog and Cron even did a curly mouth of the patrolling one. <laughs> Can you not head revive it, Trog? asked Cron, mildly agitated. I know it was short, said Trog, 
confidently, but pretty much uselessly. So we're going somewhere short then, said Cron. There was no word for it on Drazpluk, but Cron was a little unhappy, a little worried, and quite a big little off-pissed. <laughs> Trog was meant to be the brains behind this culture search, but he couldn't even locate the note parchment. I think it had four or five hieroglyphs, said Trog. And if head thinking serves me well, he continued, the latter completers made breast sounds. You what? <laughs> said Crom. Sounding like breast, or maybe pest, or nest, or something, trailed off Trog. Are those actually place words, Trog? queried Crom. I have no idea. Trog replied, but I'm sure they're in the Sander-like word search facility. We just need to try them on the Earth residence, see which breast sounds are place words. But this will mean exchanging mouth noises with an Earth resident, said Crom nervously. And from all we've encountered, they are sure to be suspect-minded if we attempt to intercourse. <laughs> there is no optionality, Crom, said Trog. We must establish our destin area, or we could be forever M25-ish. <laughs> An involuntary shudder went through them both, as they recalled the ten fruitless planet eons spent on their reconnaissance mission, circle driving in London cornerlands. Surely, this time, they would actually go somewhere. Trog plucked up some inner guts. His voice was disconcertingly loud and public. Excusing me, he ventured. I think we may be looking for the vest. Every pair of oculars hit the floor. <laughs> Breast sounds, he tried, unwisely. <laughs> We're looking for the chest, perhaps? <laughs> Two young women, as slightly perturbed, pulled their coats across their body uppers. <laughs> the best? Uneasiness spread. But in mouth noising these breast sounds, Trog's head thoughts were hyper reactivated. It's a country word, he announced to Cron. Vest country, best country, or something. A friendsome sentient, who appeared to Trog and Cron as if he had been left outside too long, suddenly spoke. If you're looking for the best country, that'll be the West country. He sounded like it, impressively. That's it, said Trog excitedly. The West country, that's where we're going. And in his excitement, he leaned forward, lifted the man off his seat and slapped him very hard on the bottom which, whilst not merely acceptable, but positively welcomed as a gratitude indicator on Drazpluk, was not exactly calculated to reinforce one's anonymity on the train mobile. In a display of shock and disgust, the natives expressed their outrage in no uncertain terms by staring ever more diligently at the floor. One assertive Earth resident even emitted a meaningful little cough. So what is the West Country, Trog? Inquired Crom once decorum had returned. It's a land of rolling hills, green fields, wondrous bays, and Plymouth, replied Trog, encompassing most of his somewhat patchy researchification in a single comprehensive sentence. No craters? Asked Crom. No craters, asserted Trog. Sounds a bit dull then said Cron. Each to his own, said Trog. The trainmobile squealed slowly to a halt. The friendsome sentient self-evicted, lightly rubbing at his rear piece and studiously ignoring his assailant. I think we need to be careful, said Cron. No more whacking of the bottom parts. I suspect it may not be cultural apposite. 
Don't forget, Trog, we need to blend. Look like we belong in the West. <coughs> Drawing on his final pieces of researchification, Trog reassured his companionator. We just have to order cream teas, <laughs> eat pasties, and wear these, he said confidently. They nearly all wear these in the West. And he produced from his space bag two pairs of spurs and a couple of cowboy hats. <laughs> and since even now no Earth resident gave them any starey looks, Cron was happy to believe that all would be well.